to be able to wayfind, to navigate, you literally have to keep your home in your mind so that you know where you're going, um, which, <laughs> I mean, literally, there's no maps, no compasses, like you have to be able to chart the position by the stars and always remember where you're coming from, um, which to me is such a metaphor for what we aspire to do in real life, sort of never forget where we came from, um, and that will always sort of help guide our way. I really related to Moana in a lot of ways. I think um, I love characters with drive. Um, Moana knows exactly who she is and what she wants to do. She is someone who, since she was a little girl, stared out at that ocean and wanted to know what was on the other side of the horizon. And, you know, she had her responsibilities at home and she has this family that she loves and this island that she loves, but there's that inside voice that's calling. And so um, to, to answer that, to be able to quiet life enough that you hear that inner voice that, is who you really are. Um, you know, that's, that's something that's really worth writing about because I think, uh, you know, I think it's so important. What's really wonderful about working with them is it's, it's and, and really working in the Disney experience is you're always sort of getting um, ideas from people who make the thing. You know, Ron and John are um, some of our greatest animators. And so you're in a meeting and they're doodling. And you know, at your normal job, you know, at your normal board meeting, doodling is frowned upon. But at a good Disney meeting, everyone's come away with like four or five doodles um, because that's they think entirely visually, and they have an incredible visual vocabulary. Um, and I try to match that musically. Um, so that's that's always really fun. You know, there'd be moments where. I would bring in just a verse and a chorus. I was like, I think this is where we're heading with this song. Um, and then they'd say, well, what if Tamatoa has all these jewels and the reflections are what's singing and that, and that would then inform the song in turn. So it's sort of visuals informing music and always in service of story. I was sort of the last man on the team, um, and the, the fun of that was jumping on a plane, going halfway around the world, and then two days later, uh, you know, being in a studio with Opataya and Mark in New Zealand, um, seeing lots of local groups perform, um, and seeing um, just incredible um, chor choruses um, and, and musical groups performing, and really getting a sense of the diversity of music in this world, uh, in this part of the world. And, um, and then we were in a studio two days later, and, and one of the first things that came out of that experience really in New Zealand was the song that you hear in the trailer, uh, We Know the Way. We Know the Way was really the first song we all wrote together for the movie. Um, Opataya brought in the, the melody and, and uh, the lyrics in his native language, and then Mark and I got in there and just sort of started playing with him, like really just vibing out, playing drums. Where You Are is another one where, you know, we, we always want to start um, sort of with within the, the rhythmic world um, of, of the Pacific Islands. So this was, I, I'm sure there's video of, of Mark and Opataya and I just on drums, just finding rhythms we liked. Um, and I remember on that one, Opie just started improvising, just sort of like singing, da, 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 just vowels, da, 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 and I, we recorded all of it, and then I went away with it and sort of found my favorite of his improvisations and built a melody out of that. So the make way, make way, Moana, it's time you knew. Those were all Opie improvising over Mark playing guitar and me playing drums. Uh, and then, um, you know, the larger point of that song, um, it's a very tough needle to thread because uh, Moana loves her island and she loves her people, but at the same time, at every moment, she turns to the sea. That's her default mode. Dwayne has such incredible charm, um, and he's, he's such a humble guy, even though um, he has no need to be modest about anything. So I just sort of thought, what would be like the most fun thing to hear the rock sing? And it's, you're welcome. You're welcome for my existence. You're welcome for the fact that you get to meet me. Um, it's such a, it's such playing into his, his charm and his confidence and his cockiness. Um, and, and so it was a real joy to write because it's fun to get to play that. The villain song. Man, Disney has some good villain songs. Jafar, Scar, Cruella, uh, Ursula, poor unfortunate souls. Um, so um, we get to meet this murderous mean crab named 
Tamatoa, and um, and the fun for me was finding out Jermaine Clement from Flight of the Concords uh, was going to provide the voice, uh, which is such a great, distinctive voice. And 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 I, you know, I we really wanted to sort of write the anti lesson of the movie, where you know, if Moana's journey is finding out what that voice inside her says and who she really is, Tamatoa comes in and goes, doesn't matter, who cares? It's about how you look. He's from the deepest, darkest part of the sea. Your armor is important. The glitter that attracts prey is important. So who cares who you are on the inside? You gotta be shiny, homie. Um, so that's, that was enormous fun to write. We're trying to do a lot of things with the score of this movie. One, um, it's a huge canvas. The ocean is literally a character in our movie. So what does the ocean sound like? Um, it is uh, set in the Pacific Islands. What does that world sound like? So we drew upon that culture and that rich musical culture of that part of the world. Um, at the same time, it is also this young woman's journey. Um, so uh, we, you know, we sort of start on her island. As she goes further from her island, I think the music and the, the kinds of music that this movie em encompasses grow exponentially with her. You have so much to look forward to when you watch this movie. Um, and you know, it's, what's really exciting about Moana is it has a little bit of everything. It's, it's, it's both sweeping in scope and intimate. Um, it is the story of, of this young woman fearlessly discovering who she is, um, but she's also doing it with demigods and you know, below the sea and fighting monsters. Um, so it's got lots of action and it's really funny in places. Um, it's also a glimpse into this sort of part of the world inspired by the stories from the Pacific Islands. Um, and so it's this glimpse in this world you've never seen before. This was really sort of the moment where um, we see what Moana where Moana says for herself how she feels, where we don't just see her going towards the water, but she sings like, I just, this is where I belong. And, and I've always wanted to sort of be on the other side of that horizon. Um, and so, um, you know, daunting to put music and lyrics to that, but at the same time, it's so exciting because you, you know you're part of a tradition of, of um, strong Disney characters who, who know what they want. My purpose was to show, show others, other cultures, uh, that we had awesome cultures in the South Pacific. They only see the very, the surface of it, uh, because they only go to tourist areas, you know. And, um, and to have this uh, Disney do a movie on only um, 2,000 years ago really allows that um, culture to shine through. And that is heaven for me. When I met these two gentlemen, I, I, you know, it didn't take me long to see that they were, you know, quite decent human beings, and um, you know, we they were very keen to to um, to show the world uh, in a respectful way the, the culture of the South Pacific. Um, I met uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda and uh, Mark Mancina in Auckland, uh, 2014. Um, they came to a, a festival there, the largest festival, Polynesian festival in the world, called Pacifica. And, um, you know, we sort of trying to suss each other out, and uh, I, I didn't really know much about them, you know. And, um, uh, but they had this uh, competition at the festival, a dance competition, um, where you do Pacific, you know, fast uh, hip movements, you know. And, and Lynn got up there. And uh, he actually won, won the competition. So all in all, that, that, that was it. It impressed me that, yeah, this is the right man for this, thing, for this job. <laughs> when we get together, which is usually for a week, something like that, um, there, is some, there is some sort of magic that generates, you know. I mean, um, Lynn with his amazing words, you know, he just seems to find uh, the right phrasing for different things. And, uh, and Mark, of course, his experience is, is incredible, you know. Um, so I'm the newbie, you know. <laughs> I'm the new kid in town, so I arrived there. And, uh, but, you know, I think the, the thing that made me sit in well was, you know, I, my firm belief that I wanted to promote my culture, you know. And they were very respectful to that. And um, 
we have, we have just had a lot of fun in the studio. I write by emotions, you know. It, it's, it, it, um, I, I can feel where it goes. In there. And so we have this amazing collaboration between, you know, the three of us where, you know, all these paper lying around with all those dots on it and, and, I'm, and I'm throwing emotions in there and, and uh, yeah, you, and it takes us to a nice place. Well, for, we know the way is very simple. I mean, uh, the words uh, uh, in uh, Samoan and then took along. Just says that we are voyagers called to the sea, called by the great God of the sea, um, who gives us a, a challenge, puts up a challenge. We take on that good challenge and uh, so prepare. We know the ways of the sea, you know, via the skies, the currents, etc. All those words are in there, although most English-speaking people wouldn't understand. But with Lynn coming in with all that beautiful, those beautiful words, it just married the whole thing together. Where you are, yes, I remember that. We were uh, at the animation studio, and um, you know, I remember banging on the table, and uh, and Lynn was across, and she comes running across here, and Mark picks up a guitar, and off we went, you know. And then Lynn took it home and finished off the lyrics, and. That's how it came up, but uh, just a celebration of the, of the South Pacific or the Pacific Islands as a paradise, you know. I mean, that's another very exciting thing, you know. Uh, it is like a paradise, and that's what that song uh, means to me. You know? When you've got um, uh, a song that means so much to, you know, all this uh, knowledge, uh, because, you know, uh, <clears throat> The past uh, is passed on verbally in the tradition of the South Pacific. So the idea that Moana already knew, it was already inside her, uh, all this detail, all this knowledge of, uh, of her people, of her culture, of her, you know, who she was. This was who she was, you know. So, yeah, that was, uh, once again, uh, yeah, uh, quite an exciting thing for me. We went down there because they were having a music festival, a vocal, basically vocal and dance from all different islands that are down there. Everybody comes and brings their own music and, or, or, and performance to this big event and they all perform. And uh, it, was, it was exciting and we got to hear a wide range of music and music styles, mostly on the vocal side of it, but also in the dance and the movement. So we all met to see that and take part of that. And then they rented a studio and we went to, into the studio with some equipment and just played around, you know, like a, like a band, like starting a band, just trying to come up with ideas and getting to know each other. It, the, the score is primarily percussive. There's a lot of percussion and a lot of vocal, you know, whether it's the songs, which obviously have vocals, but then also the score has um, a Pacific choir on it. It has a group that Opataya put together a part of his family, part of his people that he works with and his group, Tavaka. And uh, so this combination of that, that group of singers and the choir and the fact that we're using an orchestra and then we've got racks of percussionists. The, the uh, ethnic woodwind player that we worked with yesterday, Pedro Eustache, he's playing a bansuri but made from bamboo from, the, from one of the Pacific Islands. So it's, you know, we're trying to be very organic about what we're doing here, but we are blending the styles. Much like Lynn and, and myself and Opataya, it's a blend of, of cultures and styles, for sure. I, I love their work, so, you know, when they, when they first pitched this project, that, that really got me excited to work with them, because I've loved what they've done in the past. And, yeah, they were, they were very, always pushing for the vocal and the choral element to this score. They really wanted to make sure that that was present, that it was playing a role in the music. Um, and I think the main thing that all of us wanted is we didn't want, we didn't want the music in the score to feel like it could be dropped into another film. We didn't want it like that. We wanted it to be unique to this project. And I think we've achieved that. The music can, is like a gigantic magnifying glass. It can enhance it. Um, it can sometimes push you too hard, which you don't want. It can manipulate you, which sometimes you do want, sometimes you don't want it. To be very, very careful with it. Um, it can play humor. It can stay away from the humor.
But whatever experience you have, it should enhance that experience. And the promise for me, I like to leave the theater and have those tunes in my head when I leave. And if I have them the next day, I'm really happy. And I think this movie has, has those kind of tunes where you, they stick with you and you hear them. Um, I think that's very important. Um, well, How Far I'll Go, which is one of the songs that Moana sings, really represents her. And so I've, I've used, and that was Lynn's song, which is a beautiful song, and I've used that theme in different ways. I've changed it around and used it in, you know, very, very subtle ways. I've used just two notes of it. I've expanded it into a huge orchestral piece. I've put it into a minor key and made it feel very emotional that way. So that's, and that's just one of them. So there's several songs, so there's a lot to choose from. Well, for, you know, they have been really great with me. I've worked with them for years. We've done films. We did the musical, the Lion King musical. So I've been with them in the trenches, and, and it's been an incredible journey. But their classic movies, you took away those melodies. Besides the animation, besides all the things that everybody loves, you took home those melodies. And I've always, like every project we've done, Tarzan, Lion King, uh, Moana, I've tried to make sure that you take those themes home with you and, and they stick with you. It's essentially important, I think. Well, first of all, I think the songs are great. You know, we, we, we really tried to avoid having any songs in here that weren't in their own way unique, a different way of doing it, you know, not a formulaic way. Uh, so I think the songs, I think there's a song there for everybody. There's, they're different. They, they're not, there isn't like one style of song. And the backdrop to the movie being percussive and choral and orchestral, but then pop at times and have this really, these great rhythms from the South Pacific, all of that stuff is so likable that I just think it's a fun movie. I think people are going to really enjoy that aspect of it. Hey guys, did you know that Pierce Brosnan was contractually forbidden from wearing a full tuxedo in any non-James Bond movie from 1995 to 2002? For this and more movie facts, click on more videos. But if you want something else, click on the playlist.